Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome back again to the Voice of the Eternal Gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, and I'm the host of the program, and I'm so glad to see the member of the panel already. I guess you're officially uh, uh, part of this uh, discussion or study on the prophecies. My brother Paul, thank you for coming back. Thank you, Pastor. Brother Sig, thank you for being here again. Glad to be here. Brother Patrick, I'm so thank happy you. to have you thank on board in and, and this study. In the book of Daniel, chapter today, we're going to get into chapter five, and we're going to see something very interesting in chapter five that we need to share with the brethren, and it got to do with the Babylon, the old Babylon, in relationship with the new Babylon. But before we do that, let's pray. Let's have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you again for bringing us uh, to the viewers throughout the uh, throughout the land and to, uh, to present these messages in love, but never forgetting that you are about to come and you want all of us to come to the truth as it is in Jesus Christ. And it is on his name that we ask you these blessings. Amen. 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 Um, can you read chapter 5, chapter 5 of the book of Daniel, verses 1 and 2, please? Okay, it says, Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Okay, uh, over here, we, we, we have read previously, studying the Bible, that Nebuchadnezzar, when he was during the time of his king, his kingship, I guess, uh, he was given the wine too. And what do we see now on his grandson? What is he doing to all the people that he called in? Yeah, giving wine. Babylon seems to like this wine. And giving the wine, right? That's right. Uh, talking about parallel. And... Also, we can see in here that the old Babylon never changed. Yeah. This is, seems to be also a religious kind of a feast to a... He called in a thousand of his lords to a to a uh, almost a worldwide global religious feast of some sort. That's right. Sacrilegious, I would say. Sacrilegious. Feast. Sacrilegious. Okay. So... But it was boasting about... Conquering Israel and, and the God of Israel. Yes, remember in Daniel chapter 1, if I may say, verse 1 and verse 2 there, Nebuchadnezzar had taken these vessels that he had conquered and put them in the house of his God. And you can see this as symbolizing he was trying to show that their religion, their gods, was greater than the gods of Israel. And here we are as a mockery that they're doing the same thing here, drinking from what was supposed to be sacred vessels of the Lord. In, in Daniel chapter 1, he did it as a punishment to Israel. When Nebuchadnezzar took those vessels and took Israel captive, here, this son is in rebellion. He knew of that event. Yes. And he ignored the warnings that his grandfather Nebuchadnezzar got from the Lord. We just read in chapter 4 of how the Lord warned him, and he didn't take the warning, and he was humbled for seven years like a beast eating grass and living in the, in the dew. Now, in verse 4, they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. A, a total, complete affront to God, the true God, and rejecting him and using his vessels to, to carry out this process of sacrilege. Uh, the feast went on in chapter 5. That's right. This great feast. 
the wine, exchanging or drinking of the wine. And what was about to take place during that night? Because as we're going to see, this, this has a parallel yeah. also. I'll, and, read, I'll read it in verse 5. Okay, please. It says, In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against another. Seemed very frightened about this hand. Uh-huh. The writing on the wall. Now, very judgment was coming upon Babylon, the old Babylon, that night, the very night. You know that phrase, the writing on the wall. That's a phrase that many people say. Yeah. He saw the writing mm. on the wall. That, uh, and that means... Um, it was over for him. Yeah. You know, and But it's from this story in, in Daniel, chapter 5. And also it, in that verse 5, it says... Uh, the man's hand was seen against over against the candlestick. What do you think that was? Go ahead. That was the candlestick that they had taken from the temple. That's right. That's right. Hmm. Now, here we see that judgment came upon Babylon, the old Babylon, because there was so much abomination taking place in their midst. Not only they have taken the people captive, not only they have been uh, introducing, uh, exchanging the uh, a, a, a false uh, worship throughout, the, throughout the, the, the whole kingdom. And now we see how God was, the time for Babylon came to an end. Okay? Now, uh, the end, well, right there, many Bible like my Bible, King James, it says, that day, the end of Babylon came about. That's right. That's right. This is the end of Babylon. You know, something that's very interesting in this story to me is the fact that he saw the handwriting on the wall. And this seemed to be somewhat of a bloodless hand. It said a man's hand, but it didn't say an actual man was there. No. So it just seemed like a mysterious writing to them. You know, Fingers. That's fingers right. That's right. The fingers hand, of a man's right? hand. How many times in the Bible do you read about fingers writing this is the writing of God now notice God wrote the Ten Commandments Christ wrote in the sand remember in front of the woman that was brought to him accused of adultery and here you have writing all three occasions have something to do with the judgment of God's law because remember he was writing their sins in the sand of course the writing of the law on the tablet and here the writing of a judgment because of their transgressions Wow, yes. Um, there's something else that the Ten Commandments were written by the finger of God. That's right. Yes. And Jesus, it says in the New Testament, in one gospel it says Jesus cast out devils uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. But in another place it says Jesus cast out devils by the finger of God. So the finger of God is the Holy Spirit. Mm. The candlestick was filled with what? Oil. Oil. oil and oil is a symbol of Holy the Spirit. Holy Holy Spirit. Spirit. Zechariah 4 says. So yeah. this was the Holy Spirit writing the judgment that God was pronouncing upon uh, Babylon at that time. The old Babylon. That's right. Because, and that was because her pride. Because her idolatry. That's right. Her uh, calling for this uh, gathering, uh, uniting everybody in, into a false uh, worship. Uh, is, do you think is that a coincidence? If you go to the book of Revelation chapter 18, let's take it there. Because what we're doing, we're, co we're comparing, you know, verses with verses, you know, saying that how Daniel and the book of Revelation go hands to hand. Look, the same language, almost the same language That's that right. applied to the old Babylon is applied to the new Babylon. And yes, it cannot be applied to, to the pagan Rome over here because pagan Rome already and to existed, uh, what, 1,500 years ago. You mean in Revelation 18? Revelation right. 18. Yeah. This prophecy 
when the fulfillment of this prophecy was prophecy was going to an was coming to an end, uh, do we still have the narrow narrow over there in Rome? No, no, or, not at or, all. Or Diocletian, or Justin, or Justinian. No, let, let me let me go ahead and read it, Pastor. It says, "For all nations." I'm reading Revelation 18:3. For all read nations. Two. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, go ahead. Okay, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Then hence comes forth this voice from heaven. It says, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Hmm. Now, now, wait a minute. Let's read verse 2 so our viewer know to whom is the Bible talking about? Okay, it Please. says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And on the verse 1, please, chapter 18. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. So this voice was coming right from where? From, from heaven. heaven. From heaven. It was coming from God. And the very strong, loud voice. See, the enemy will like, uh, doesn't want God's people to know about this. God's mm. children. They want us to be quiet. That's why today is not... And I know that. And by the phone calls, the letters, and everything that we get constantly, yes, we get phone calls and letters, praise God, of people waking up and opening their eyes for the glory of God. But the opposition is, the, the majority of the people, what they said is, this is not political corrected. As one of our ministers, radio stations tell us, Many times across the land. It says, you know, the problem is with these messages that it divides our congregations, mm. divide our community. Mm. We want everybody to be in peace, in harmony. And guess what? I want to see harmony and peace, but must be in what? On the word of God. And the truth. That's right. And I don't want to be preaching. That's why I got this beautiful partner like you. Verse 7. <laughs> How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. Uh-huh. But before the torment and the sorrow, she glorified herself. Who is this she? The, the church, the church of Babylon, the mother church. Mm-hmm. The Catholic church says it's incorrect to refer to the other churches as our sister. No. We are the mother church. Mm. And, and, and of course, Brother Paul, you, yes. you, you're talking about the system, not about the people. Yeah, you know, yeah, God yes, has children yes, in there. Yes. Yeah, God has good no, people. We're not condemning the people. We're speaking yeah. of the system. Okay. It's the system that speaks and says yeah. these words. Can, can, can you keep right there? Oh, oh, and I, I will be right back. About. Top scholars and theologians from around the country come together to reveal the hidden history of the book of Revelation. With powerful reenactments and incredible visual effects, this 95-minute masterpiece brings to life the book of Revelation like never before. Revelation is no longer a mystery. Get your copy today. Welcome back. Brother Paul, go ahead. In Isaiah 47, we see a prophecy concerning Babylon, the mother, the, the, the church that rebels against God as uh, Belshazzar did. And the prophecy says, Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. And throughout this chapter, I don't want to read all of it, you see a punishment inflicted upon this mother church, Babylon, the mother, because of her disobedience and her blatant rejection of God's warning, similar to what uh, Belshazzar did in, in rejection of God's warning and God's prophet that was right there in his midst. Yeah, the whole Babylon. Yes. 
for verse 10, for thou hast trusted in thy wickedness and said, none seeth me. I am none else uh, beside this mother. Therefore, evil shall come upon thee, and thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. So similarly, as uh, Belshazzar is now quaking, the question is, why, why, why are his knees knocking? Where is his pride and his arrogance? No, his knees are uh, shaking. <laughs> shaking. God is going to bring her down, Amen. And to, not from, from the throne to the very dust. A similar thing happened to Nebuchadnezzar as well. Yeah. But that's Definitely. the judgment, a judgment that's going to come from yeah. God. Yeah. This writing on the wall wasn't a dream or a vision. Everyone in that uh, banquet hall could see the handwriting, mm -hmm. but no one could interpret it. Belshazzar called for all of his wise men, but they couldn't understand it. And so he finally, the queen, uh, the queen, the king's mother, told him about Daniel, and he had heard about Daniel. Daniel was called in, and he said, are you that Daniel that helped my father? And Daniel said something very important. Okay. Um, and it's in verse 22. Yeah. And Daniel talked about what happened in, in verses uh, 18 through 21. Daniel told Belshazzar the story of Nebuchadnezzar and what happened to him for seven years and how he was humbled and finally acknowledged God. And then verse 22, it says, And thou his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. Belshazzar knew the stories, but he didn't learn from uh, Nebuchadnezzar's experience. Nebuchadnezzar's experience in Daniel 4 is for every le leader of every nation on earth that they would humble themselves and the words to Belshazzar are to all those leaders who refuse to walk humbly with God and walk in righteousness. J James 4, 17, Therefore to him that knoweth to do well and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Yeah, and when you say all the leaders of the world, including the religious leader. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay? Be because, and, yes. Okay, because mm -hmm. that the problem in the spiritual Speaking in the spiritual sense, the people follow their, their spiritual leader. The verse that Paul read in Isaiah 47 where Babylon says, I am and there is none else beside me. If you read other parts of Isaiah, that's what God says about himself. Babylon's trying to be like God. God. Blasphemy. That's, that's uh, not the place for a human being to be. And you can see how very easily God's, God can make someone tremble uh, with, with, fear. Uh, with a fear that so terrible that he will offer the third of the kingdom to anyone who can uh, get him out of this predicament. And there's a constant calling of the astrologers and the scientists and the yeah. Chaldeans. They, 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 they run to them and not to God. Instead of going straight to Daniel. Yes. Right? Yeah, we... You know, when Daniel came in, he knew immediately what the writing on the wall was. And he began to tell his story to uh, Belshazzar, or Belshazzar at that time, explaining, like Brother Patrick was saying, about the history of his, his uh, relative, his grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar. He says, you knew all of this. Yes. And Daniel knew that judgment was going to come to Babylon because Daniel was a student of Bible prophecy, prophecy. And we should be students of Bible prophecy. Let me show you those Bible prophecies. Go ahead. Okay, Isaiah 44. If you look into the history books of the overthrow of Babylon, you will find that King Cyrus, he wasn't king at this time. He was a general of the Persian army. And he went in through the open gate that was left because the river had dried up and they went in this very night and it was prophesied. How did it dry up? Notice what it says. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. I'm going to say this. It dried up because it was prophesied. Well, <laughs> he, he, he diverted, he diverted the, river. the river. That's right, yeah. diverting the river. Here in Isaiah 44 and verse 27, it says, That saith to the deep, be dry, and I will dry up thy rivers. Notice verse 28. 
that saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built and to the temple, thou foundation shall be laid. And then the Lord here, and then also in uh, verse 45 or chapter 45, the Lord called this man Cyrus by name before he was even in existence. That's how we can know that Daniel stood upon Bible prophecy. He could, he knew judgment was coming based upon what the Bible had said. You wonder if Cyrus got the idea to conquer Babylon that way by reading the book of Isaiah. Daniel might have showed him. Um, it's possible. It's very possible. Okay. But one uh, thing that we can learn from this, uh, we can see the writings on the wall by seeing the condition that is the prevailing condition today. That's right. When we see the nations, you know, going openly against God's will. That's when, right. when, when we see religious institutions uh, uh, throwing out of the window God's law. When we see the prevailing iniquity, you know, in this society that we're living in, well, we can see the writings on the wall. So this is a time to call for repentance. Yes. Repentance is what? To come back That's right. to the old path. That's right. Yes, Brother Patrick. Um, I, I repent of what I just said. I don't think Daniel would have showed Cyrus those words before Babylon fell because I think Daniel was a loyal person to the kingdom he was involved with. And uh, he would, that would have been treason. Of, you know, oh, treason of yeah. Okay, well, well, that's fine. And the book, but let's go back again uh, because it's important for our viewer to understand why we must bring this type of prophetic, you know, prophecies and warnings. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, we see again that the God, God commanded, commanded to even to publish it. Look at this. Uh, verses 1 and 2, Jeremiah chapter 50. It says the word that the Lord spake against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard. Publish and conceal not. Say Babylon is taken. Bel is com confounded. Merodach is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded. Her images are broken in pieces. So what is God telling us in the That destruction would come to Babylon. And, and, and yes, but, but what it's saying that we should be staying quiet with that. No, it says knowing to declare. Knowing what is coming. It says to declare it among knowing the Knowing what is coming. When we see all this judgment that are upon the earth, natural disasters. I usually tell our radio listeners, we haven't seen nothing yet. When we hear about earthquakes, cyclones, hurricane, etc., et we haven't seen nothing yet. Epidemics. The closer we get to the end, more and more of those things are coming. And the sad thing is, instead of majority of the people, instead of Babylon, the modern day Babylon, coming into open repentance, and calling for a true revival and reformation, what are they going to be seeing? Pride, like the old Babylon. Drinking of the wine, That's giving right. of the wine, giving of the false teachings and false, you know, a doctrine. God is telling us, let's go back and read what took place so you can learn. But guess what? We are the worst students of history. It's true. It's true. We don't learn from history. Yes, my brother. I'd like to read what the handwriting on the wall was. Okay, go ahead. Read it. Daniel 5, 25 says, Yes, go ahead. This is the writing that was written, Mini, Mini, Tekel, Eupharsin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mini, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Mm -hmm. That's the Babylonian kingdom of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Mm-hmm. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Yeah, judgment came upon Babylon. The same word, the same language that we find not, not in those type of 
all languages, but in plain English today, it brings to us in the book of Revelation a judgment against the great Babylon. Now, notice this. He call it the great, and it is, it is a mystery Babylon. Why do you suppose that the word of God used mystery Babylon? Well, could that be that most people will not understand it? Exactly what it is. <laughs> I mean, it says that the dragon who gives power to the beast, it says the dragon is seeking to confuse and to deceive the whole world. And because this beast is receiving power from the dragon, the beast also deceives the whole world. And then the whole world, because of this wine, they're drunken and, and they cannot discern truth from air. Here, yes. in, here at this feast, they're all drinking wine, praising their gods. The mystery of Babylon is opposed to the mystery of God. The mystery of God is the gospel to save us from sin. The mystery of Babylon is a false gospel that you can be saved in sin. In sin. Well, we're going to see that prior to the destruction of the modern day Babylon, God has sent a specific messages in order for the people who are still in Babylon not to take part of her plagues. We're going to see that. So, Brother Paul, what? It is a mystery that all these false doctrines extracted from tradition and paganism can be used to uh, guide the whole world in rebellion against God. They make no sense. Baptism by sprinkling, veneration of dead, and, 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 and so on. A Sunday worship. Easter, which predates Christ by 2,000 years. All these strange doctrines and people just follow mm. obediently. And they'll get angry with you for not following as well. Brother said, let me give you 10 seconds to you and then I have to close. Well, we really have to be in God's word, study it and say, Lord, please lead me and guide me into your truth. Man, you want 10 seconds too, huh? <laughs> yeah. You look at me and say, hey, how about me? Go ahead. People need to read the Bible for themselves so that they know what, what the truth is. Yes, my dear viewers, we come to the conclusion of this program. In the next program, we're going to see three angels warning this earth before the final judgments are going to come against Babylon and against this whole world. May God help us to get ready and be blessed by our God. And Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.